organic file. All right. All good? Yep. Awesome. All right, so we're back here. We're on the third pack we're opening here. I gotta do the same thing. I'm just gonna open them from the top because I can't seem to get that little side um, strip. It's just it's supposed to be here, but I feel like if I get in there and do anything, it's just gonna hurt the cards on the side because I'd have to use some significant force. They did a good job of, of sealing these, I'd say. Thanks for letting me use this. This is a, uh, a little small ceramic <laughs> cutter, was it? Yeah, I think it's a piece of little ceramic. Okay, a little ceramic cutter. I'm okay with that as long as it gets through the plastic and um, doesn't hurt the cards, of course. I didn't want to get it too close. Uh, let's see here. Plastic's kind of. I don't know if they would have done this same thing where they just crumble or strip apart and break apart, but I'm able to just get it from the top and kind of tear it down here. So yeah, for all you viewers out there, um, like I said, this might never happen again. Most likely it won't. Uh, is there are very few of these boxes left. Very few. We might be talking about a handful in the whole world. Um, so if you ever want to acquire one, go on eBay or come see Brian here. I'm sure he can yeah, well, we might try to find scrape one up, but yeah. <laughs> bring your wallet too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe a couple wallets because these things go for over 10K. Uh, but it is a pure joy today to open these. I mean, look at this. this is my first card right here, Island Sanctuary. This is a very uh, good card. You decline to draw a card, and in, in exchange, you can only be attacked by creatures without. Island walk or flying and you would combo this uh, the synergy is uh, with howling minds so you can afford to just draw one less card and uh, you can play cards like gravity sphere all creatures lose flying so essentially nothing mm -hmm. could attack you it's pretty handy <laughs> pretty handy I mean for white that's pretty good that's a strong defense card uh, here's a card pirate ship pirate ship hasn't seen a whole lot of play um, it was kind of an odd card uh, because it kind of took some of the effects of the Sea Serpent, where you can only attack um, if your opponent has an island in play. And it's destroyed immediately if you as a controller don't have any islands in play, which kind of makes sense as ship and everything, but it also took the effects of Tim. Tap to do one damage to yep. the target. So it was kind of expensive for five. You know, it's either like, do you want to attack with it or do you want to ping with it? And the versatility of it is pretty good, but... Blue decks don't see it. They don't play this very often. It's a really cool art, though. Same artist who did the Royal Assassin, um, Tom Winterstrand. Uh, but it is a five uh, casting cost card, so you got to kind of pick your poison, that sort of speak. All right, we're just going to keep going. He's, this card is worth a lot in beta, though. This is a, a $150 card in beta. If you ever want to get one. Balance. That's a crusher. That's <laughs> a big one. And they printed that a bunch of times. That's a staple for sure. Um, Mark Poole d drew this one as well. But um, I mean, there's nothing better than just dumping all your artifacts out there. You got no cards in hand. And then you play a balance and just equalizes the hand size with your opponent and essentially has to discard down to where you were at. So mm -hmm. you got any stories on a balance? Just watching other people get ruined by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because all it does is balance. You know, it's not like destroy everything your opponent has, so to speak, but it's like bring bring your opponent to the same level you're at. And I think that's a very fair card, if, but you can abuse it. So yep, there's a there was a version of that that had cascade, or you would cascade into it. That there was a modern deck. That oh you, really? You played Greater Gargadon, where you can sacrifice all your permanents yes. with it on the stack, yep. and then it comes in. Yep, and then that's Greater right. Gargadon comes in, and then you do balance after that. Or like, yeah, you put it on. You just eat everything. Leave him with like one counter yep. and suspend, and then balance, and then you have no cards left, and then it just and then it and comes you have in a nine yeah. ten. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Would they would they usually play that for commander or? Uh, it was a modern deck. So modern yeah, deck. Yeah, it was okay. a kind of a combo deck. Gotcha. Garga balances. <laughs> I see. I've seen it played in commander. So yeah. All right, we got guys Liege here. Guys Liege, do you know this card? No. No? All right. I mean, I've seen him. I You've seen him? He is, in its original printing, the most neon green image <laughs> that was printed. It's 
pretty crazy. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. It's it's almost like that toxic ooze feeling that you get from uh, that neon green. But he's actually has a card very good. Um, he's XX. Uh, power toughness equal to the number of force you control and when he attacks is equal to the number of force your opponent controls but it's got one cool little ability you tap it and make any land into a forest as mm. long as he's around so the effect is tap as many lands you can make him in a forest and come on in for a big old hippie visit yeah, he's what, six mana or six mana yeah but you use instant energy on him you do two forests at a time he's really good in green he grows humongous as a blocker uh, he was one of my favorite cards, actually. Uh, Seems really good. Yeah, <laughs> one of my actually when I used to play, I had a green, mono green deck, and I had a five color deck uh, back in back in uh, '95 that um, were the strongest, and I had one of those. And my mono green deck's really good. Smoke. Yeah, smoke. Yeah, it's a simple card. Only untap creature each untap phase, so it's good against. Goblins or white weenie and stuff. Deathlace. I mean, look at that image. That snake looks as real as they get. It's like it's coming out at you. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It makes a card into black. I guess you can use it with a lot of different things. Um, oh. Oh, look at that. I guess I out, in the, out of nowhere. Yeah, out of nowhere. Wow. Tropical island. And this is this is again one of the staple. Uh, or most like visually amazing feats of the original <coughs> Dual Lands. When you look in the, yeah, uh, the text spirals, box, yeah. you got the, um, I don't know what they're called, these lines um, of different color and this neon green is just amazing with the, with, the, with the image of blue and some green in here. So this card, I've seen the dual lands now. They're going for about what the revised dual lands are going for. Just these versions. So that's like three fifty to yeah, four hundred at least. Three, 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 I might be off three on to that 400, too. Somewhere around there, and uh, it's it's beautiful. I mean, I might play these in commander because um, you only need one of each, mm -hmm. um, or I might not. I'm not sure. Uh, those are really nice. All right, we've got the Ang of Mishra. That's really good. Deals two damage, someone puts a new land into play. So, you know, land destruction, uh, just want to deal damage. A lot of things you can do do with this. Play that with a rack, too. The rack, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. So anything, just you can deal damage. It's good and magic. And well, that's one of them. Zombie Master, the first zombie king. Give swamp bog and regeneration to all your swamps. Uh, I mean, to all your zombies for one swamp. Um... He's actually kind of better because he's a 2-3. Yep. Three mana. That 3-butt is nice. Yeah, the 3-butt is really nice. There were zombie decks at the time. The zombies aren't that strong, so it's kind of balanced um, tribal deck you could make. Oh, the Lich. You've seen this? This is amazing. You might see them commonly in white border. Um, just the art and this being black border is pretty sick. Um, the, the effect of it, and they might have eroded it, but... As I remember here, it just says you, you lose all life, and if you gain life, you may draw an extra card. Um, and each damage you suffer, you just have to sack a permanent. So you start gaining life, you draw a lot of cards. So this card was really good. Um, there was a Dark Heart of the Woods. Uh, it's a green-black uh, enchantment where mm -hmm. you sack a forest and uh, you gain three life. So that seems pretty good. Sack of forest, draw three cards, play another one, maybe some fast bond, jump in like a bunch of lands before you know it. You get your whole deck out, and you're probably winning at that time, at that point in time. All right, we got an island, volcanic eruption, nothing too crazy here. Sort of six bonds of your choice. Uh, we, I think it's still it's kind of like the um, earthquake hurricane combined, but destroys islands and. Yep. I mean. Dude, look at that color with those volcanoes, man. That is high quality art. Yeah. It does look nice, but I can't help but notice how nice the next card looks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a there's another uh, erupting volcano in the image. You see that both of them yeah. have that. Uh, two different artists, of course. Volcanic Island. This thing. If you had this thing in beta, what do you think it would be worth? A couple thousand. A couple thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think they're about to be five thousand right now. Yeah. Oh, just for the the beta, this same look in the front, 
Just the different backing and cut corners. Yep. So. That looks really nice. And it looks really nice, yep. So it begs the question, are these going to keep going up? That's the thing. As long as the game stays strong. Yeah, I don't think Magic's gonna go anywhere. Even if it, even if they close the doors, they've printed so many cards. Yeah, you can play, play this game forever. forever. Yeah, Mahmoudi Jin. It's all that's the staple of Luke creature, the biggest one. Five six flying. Five six flying, coming genie coming out of the lamp, making yep. your wishes come true of beating your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Five schmacks. Uh, and the genie just looks innocent. I mean, he's got that humble look in his face. It's like the classic, like, gin look. Yeah, yeah he's got the classic gin look, but his eyebrows are like, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm Whatever. here to serve <laughs> you. It's just like... Uh, so, I remember that was that's always been a good blue card. Farmstead. Funky card. This is a very funky card. Um, if you spend two white <laughs> during your upkeep, you gain a life. But the the farming sensation you get out of that with the little chickens running around and stuff is just it's sensational. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it's kind of benign, yeah. yeah. Just like that's a house. <laughs> yeah, it's a house. It gives Some you birds life out there, every yeah. turn. I mean, yeah, it's just funny. Three white to play it. Huh? Oh, look at that. Force of nature. Force of nature, man. Wow. Look this this guy. When I first saw him. And I, I remember there was another kid in our neighborhood. He was playing green, and he had this. And I was like, dude, I need your force of nature. <laughs> I have not seen this thing. You have an 8 8 trampler. Yeah. I need to get it. And he was like, I won't trade it. I was like, please, you need to trade it. <laughs> and, uh, and that was rough back then, man. And everyone wanted to trade their stuff off, and you saw something new and cool. You wanted it. So Here's the Rock of Courageous 3-3 Flyer. Um, this one is a really, like, rare... You barely see this ever being played. It's it's a rare card, um, three three flyer, so it had some value to it uh, monetarily as well, and um, it's good for red red wanted flyers. And here's one of them. You got the dragon whelp, the rock of courages, and the shivan or yeah. shivan dragon, whichever way you pronounce that. Um, and I I liked it. It's just hard to find room in your deck for all the cards you <laughs> want to play. Warp Artifact is good. Deals damage to an artifact's controller every turn for two black. So, you know, moxes. Yep. Here, pay, here you go. Pay the Fine. Price. Yeah. Uh, you can keep your moxes. You pay one life every turn. So, ooh, look at that. Lord, Lord of, Atlantis. of Atlantis. The original. What do you think about the neon green color? I like that art a lot. Yeah, the they've art used it on another. Nice. They reprinted it with that, but it doesn't want to look as vibrant. Yeah. That this and this is what this is what this set is about. Playing old school, it's about enjoying the vibrant colors, uh, living the good old times, um, and just having that experience after experience of visual uh, pleasure that you get from looking at these art cards. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I like collector's edition because uh, you can get these fairly you know cheap compared to the original betas. Uh, but they're not the beta, so if you want to be really, you know, solid on your collection, go get a beta set. But yeah, just go spend tens, <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands. We got the hive. You know the hive. You've seen that printed a couple of times. For five mana, it creates a one-one flying creature. And it costs five to play. Just make it. Yeah. It's not bad. Ten I mana mean, for a one-one. Yeah. <laughs> five to put it out. Five to play. And you know, yeah, over over time, you might be able to crank out a bunch of little one ones. Yeah, what's really cool though is in the text box it says at the end, if the hive is destroyed, the wasp must still be killed individually. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. All right, chaos lace again. It's got like that vibrant red pink color. I don't know, maybe orangey a little bit, like pink grapefruit, like. Vibrant. It literally has pink in it. Yeah, it literally <laughs> has pink in it. Um, and my eyes, I'm not, I don't think my eyes are perfect on color, but that's what I see is that vibrant red, yeah. uh, almost grapefruity <coughs> coloring coming out. Oh, look at that. Force Ooh. field. Wow, look at it. Black border. There's only one life to an unblocked creature. Remember when I saw that? I remember someone um, that I was doing business with, trading and stuff. That I had met, he had one of these, and when he introduced that card to me, I was like, good grief, that's It's annoying card. to play against, yeah. Play against, and if it's annoying to play against, I want it. Yep. <laughs> so, this is a this is a very good card. Three mana, Mistress Workshop, turn one. 
then before you know it, you got no problems with creatures coming at you because yep. you just pay the mana. Dunk. Dunk. Go nice away. force of nature. Boop. Yep. <laughs> Word of command. One of the gems of magic, I think, in the term, uh, in the sense of it. Never really sees play. A lot of people I don't, don't know about I've, it. I don't think I've ever seen that card. You've never no. seen this card? Well, I'm going to show you. You've got some creepy eyes. Yeah, looking. creepy eyes looking out of the darkness at you. And that instills that mental image of all you need to know are a set of eyes looking yep. at you. You need to do what's being said here. So basically, this card for two black as an instant uh, forces your opponent to show his hand. And you get to play one of those cards from his hand with his mana. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy for black. Yeah. So you're like, oh, you have a channel. I'm playing this during your main phase. You're just going to channel out all your life. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Uh, Vesuvian Double Gang, uh, actually one of my favorite cards. And the reason why I send my cards to Quentin Hoover, um, I mean, the color, the quality of art, the fact that he was able to duplicate this mirror image so well. Uh, made an impression on me and uh, stuck with me ever. Still a good card today. Still a good card today, but the blue, the white, everything about it visually is, is what I enjoy the most. Um, but it's, it's, its effect is good. Classic card, Savannah Lions. Yep. Two, two, one, Not much to say about that. Not <laughs> much to say Big about cats. That. They're still printing yeah. pretty much that version of that card. Yeah, sometimes well, it's a knight, sometimes it's a a warrior or yeah, something. Yeah, that's right. They're reprinting a lot of those um, versions of it. So. Meek Stone. Meek Stone. That's a good card. I don't think people play this enough as they should. But then again, who wants to not have creatures in their deck? Because this card has to... You have to play with small creatures or no creatures? Yep. And control decks love it. Control and decks. And we're actually seeing the mono black decks now playing these a lot because there are a lot of hypnotics and yep. the, the orders of the Ebon Hand and whatnot, black knights, they get around this guy. Um, so, I mean, I like it. I just don't see it being played as much. I Timberwolves. Think I don't think too many people have a bunch of meek stones either. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a good card. I don't know how they... They reprinted it a lot in um, Commander, right? There was a lot of the Commander sets that... I don't think wasn't so. Wasn't that from the Vault or something? There was at least some Commander uh, sets that had Meek Stone. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Revised, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and one from the Vault. Yeah, oh, from no, the Master Vault. Oh, no, there's a Masterpiece. Masterpiece? Okay, right. so they made a Masterpiece out of it. Yep. That, that so kind of says, says a lot, doesn't it? They stopped after 7th edition, yeah. so... Well, the fact that they made into a masterpiece, isn't yep. that like the verdict? That's like one of the Pretty good. top <laughs> cards to play. Uh, so we got a Timberwolves here. This is like the 1-1 Benalish hero bands, but in green, green is very heavy creature, almost oh always yeah. all creature, and you want to be able to determine how damage is distributed. This is your guy to go to. Uh, he's worth a lot. He's a rare. So if you were to get this guy in beta, he's about $60 and up. Um, and fortunately, I have one right here <laughs> I can play with. So, ooh, whoa, Mox Pearl. whoa, out of nowhere! Whoa, <laughs> out of nowhere! It's like they they didn't put these guys together. Talking They're about Thunder Wolves and then Mox yeah, Pearl. Mox Pearl, like out of nowhere! Wow. So this guy's is one of the Power Nine cards. This is the first Power Nine card we have actually looked at yeah. today. Uh, staple for white and for any deck you want to have basically a free land. Oh, it's zero. You just drop. It gives him yeah. mana. Um, now, it is white. You know, how many people want to play a white mox? It's up to you, but still a power nine card, and um, I'm very happy to have this right here because uh, I'm probably going to play it. Yep. <laughs> probably going to play it, so put it aside here. Keep going. Granite gar Gargoyle. Um this card looks amazing with the black border. They reprint a lot of them back in Revised. Um, and it's just too bleached. It does not have the same visual effect that this black, dark uh, coloring scheme will yep. give you. This is what I really like about these cards, these old cards from those sets. Oh, Badlands. Looks as good wow. as ever. <laughs> and here's one thing. I don't know if you can see it. This is one thing that really just stood out to me is all the skulls all had that like dripping ink mm -hmm. stripe that comes down from them and if i show you let me see if i can show you right going this way 
Can you see that? Almost. Over there, yep. Has Can little, you see that little, little line, line of black ink coming black down? Ink, yep. yep. All of the black cards have that. Um, sinkholes definitely show it a lot. Um, so, all right. Badlands. Here's a contract from below. This card is playing. This is used for anti. Ryan, do you know what anti is? Not not allowed to do it no more. <laughs> not allowed to do it no more. <laughs> That's getting upset. Getting your card stolen when you lose the game. <laughs> yeah, so so you remember how it works? At the beginning of the you flipped a certain number off the top of your deck or do you choose which ones do you empty out? So I guess you could do a number of ways. Traditionally it was just like uh shuffle your deck, cut it, and then take the first card, first card off the yeah. top, put it aside. That mm -hmm. was your mm -hmm. ante into the prize pool of this mini tournament you were playing heads mm -hmm. up on. And it was kinda of like an entry fee and yep. and, and a penalty if you lose, because uh, you, you just lose your you best card sometimes. Lose your yeah. best card. I mean, there were uh, there were some stories about black lotuses being anteed off uh, back in the day, just because you know yep. no one cared. And black lotus probably was about, I would say maybe like a fifty dollar card, maybe back around ninety four, because mm -hmm. it came out ninety three, so it gained a little momentum uh, in price because people you know they they realized it was good, but they there weren't a lot of them around and they just kept going up and then they're three hundred and Today, what do we have them at? Like ten grand and up, I would say, something yeah, like that, depending easy. on condition. Yeah, probably get a cheaper one for less if it's in less good condition. But just talking about ante, this card makes you discard your current hand, draw eight new cards, adding the first card to your ante. Uh, so this, for one black, would give you a full new grip. You only. It's pretty good. Only you for one black. That is sick. That's real good. Yeah, that's really good. And of course, Douglas Schuler did the art. It says, I, the undersigned, hereby agree to do all the stipulations as discussed above mm. signed. <laughs> because it's the contract from yeah. below. Yeah. <laughs> from above. Uh, yeah. Or, or from, <laughs> you know, it's from below. No, it's yeah. Yeah. Contract. Contract, so. Right. Cyclopean Tomb. This one's kind of funky because it makes a non -swamp, swamp land into a swamp, but you only do it d during your upkeep. Uh, so Does it last forever? Uh, as long as this thing sticks around. Um, but it also says if it's destroyed, uh, you remove one of those tokens of when you did the land change during each of your upkeep, returning that land to its original nature. So slowly they come back to their original state again. But that's not bad. I like that. And the art, again, I mean, look at this is kind of like, what is that, like a mummy eye? With like, and I guess it's a cyclops eye, and yeah. somebody stuffed inside the tomb in there. It's yeah, kind of creepy for. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of creepy. Can't really tell what's going on, and there's some guy coming out of the eye, out of the uh, <laughs> eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> Mono kinda art. Kind of wicked, kind of wicked art. I really like it. All right. Ooh, birds of paradise. Look at that. This is where again, green, yellow, and in this case, red just come out so vibrantly yeah, mm. flying next looks like that volcanic island back there that's right <laughs> it probably is a volcanic island in the background then you got the thick um, text yep. the bold the bold ink on on the, the text and this is a classic staple too zero one flyer zero one flyer for green gives you a mana so keep going mana short mm -hmm. it's a good card taps your opponent's uh, lands and draws out all the mana so, it's kind know, of a tempo can't play. Do anything. Yeah. yeah, but it's good. Yeah, good with again winter orbs, uh, any control setups. Um, so I like that card a lot. Crusade, Crusade. The, the original anthem. The original anthem. Yeah, all white creatures get plus one plus one. Um, I wish I had the revised one to put next to it, but. It seems pretty good. Savannah Lions, turn yeah. one, turn two, this thing, yep. swing for three. What I like to creatures. do was to put out all the creatures as fast as I could and then that. plunk the Crusade. Because I kind of see, like, if you put the Crusade out early, you're missing turns where the creatures could sure be swinging. Are, yeah. Even though the first creature would maybe get plus one, plus one, but it won't make up in the long run. So No, it won't. Yeah, yeah the strategy is probably to play this later on. And um, You've seen that card, Jihad, from Arabian Nights? Same thing, right? Same thing, a little bit better. It's contingent upon your uh, opponent having creatures in play of the color or permanence of the color that you choose, but it gives plus two, plus one. Yep. 
So they're pretty good in green. Wow, look at that natural selection. Look at the top three cards of any player's library. You can rearrange that library or, uh, I mean, rearrange the three cards or shuffle the entire library. So it's a little, that's pretty good for green. I mean, you get to like scry or in advance or shuffle your opponents if you, especially in um, commander, people are doing tutors. Do this, yep. be like, ah, <laughs> shuffle up. So I like this card. There's an artifact that taps to make people shuffle their library. It's out of some, I forget what Ooh. set it is, but it's a. Oh, that's got to be. Sometimes annoying. you just do it to be annoying to yeah, people, like, for no reason. Be annoying. <laughs> now, what can you make out of this creature? Because I remember this was kind of funny. Like, gee, it's like a tiger bird man. <laughs> tiger bird man, right? <laughs> is there, like, a creature type for that? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Because um, what's the one that flies? Mark Poole did it. <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, griffin, right? Yeah. The griffin's the, the eagle, but I can't tell you what a tiger eagle guy with a red crystal ball, in this case, would do. A big juicy apple. <laughs> yeah, a big juicy apple. Yeah. Oh, look at that tiger. Wow, that's nice. It's also dual land. This is probably worth, I'd say, 200 maybe. Yeah, Tiger see a decent amount of play. Yeah, seems a decent amount of play. Mana, uh, Mana Flare. This is actually a really stable card for red uh, yeah. in this format. You play Mono Red, play four fireballs. of these guys, Fireballs, <laughs> Sheevan Dragons, uh, anything you want to pump into, but it does affect your opponent as well. He benefits from You just got to go faster. <laughs> you got to go faster, that's right. So That's a good card for red. Ooh, Lord of the Pit. Lord of the Pit. That's some cool art. That is yeah. the best art. Mark Tiden did this one. He did Chaos Orb and some other stuff. But, I mean, look at that. That color again, the vibrant black. Oh, it's so much better than any of the other printings. 7-7 seven, seven Flying Trample. And even if you don't sacrifice your creature, you just take 7, he can still attack. So, man, he gets through, you know. A lot of the creatures that have that upkeep where you got to sacrifice something, they say... you. It gets tapped. Yep. Or the pit does not get tapped. So I play him in my reanimator deck um, with All Hallows Eve. Yeah. Um, just because he's really juicy. Disrupting Scepter seeing a lot of play in some black decks uh, for discard with the rack. Uh, so that's a good card. I want. I'm, I really want to play that. Blaze of Glory. This card is a very unique card for white. Uh, a lot of text. So I'm just going to tell you what yeah. it does for one black. The image kind of would give it away once you understand what it does. Chopping down some big men. He's chopping up a lot of big men. And basically what you do is you play to one of your creatures blocking and it can block any number of creatures. So <laughs> it's like a little surprise. A little fog almost. You're sacrificing yeah. a dude. But yeah. He takes, yeah. He, takes, he takes all incoming. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Was that the second Mox piece? Mox Ruby. Yeah, second, second one. Second piece right there. Mint out of the box. Mox Ruby. Red's really good. I mean, all the moxes are good, but the red one's very good too. In Stone Rain, this land destruction setups, do land destruction, basically turn one. I mean, yeah, you land that land. thing, Soul Ring, Stone, Stone Rain. Ring. Yeah, oh, it's gross. That's really nice. Once again, the order of this is cracking me up. <laughs> yeah, Mox no. Ruby into a cockatrice. Like <laughs> yeah, this is basically two, four, fire, destroy stuff. Uh, that blocks it, so... It has Death Touch, essentially, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it doesn't... It's whoever um, that blocks it is yeah. destroyed. As in any creature blocked. Okay, so... Yep, Death Touch, You can't touch, play defense that well, but, yeah. No, oh, but this is... And this is... A, the funny thing is here with Dan Frazier is that he did all the moxes, and he also did this cockatrice. And he really had this background thing going on where he was really good, and you'd see that with the mocks here, is that he is able to take the background layer, which is like this concrete, whatever, yeah. pebbly road it's on, or whatever it is, um, as well as the mocks has this like twirly, swirly, uh, oil painting yep. uh, swirl in it. But anyways, he's able to just really make the backgrounds make the front uh, image of the card which in this case is the mox and this is the bird in this case to really stand out it just yeah. does it really well so magical hack change the text of any card being played already in play uh, you change something that says swamp walk to planes walk um, 
and you can manipulate a lot of cards that are being played as well as in play. So this was a good control card. Uh, you'd use this with, um, let's see, it was, um, I, I forget what cards it was, because there, there's another one that's called Slide of Mine. This one was for more, more for the lanes, um, Karma. Mm -hmm. You would use this with Karma, and uh, Karma says all, Take damage, Take number, damage swamps, equal yeah. number swamps. Um, so you can just change that to whatever color you want. You can play blue white and play against any opponent and have them take damage. So this card's good for. And yeah, we're going straight from blue manipulation to black destruction. Wow, it's got two white symbols and the words and tap colon. So before very, they had the tap symbol. Yeah, huh? before they had the tap symbol or just the symbol of, of colon could have been behind it. Sure as any black card in play. Um, I think this was one of the best cyborg cards there were. Especially yeah, it's for pretty one. good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Sure, like Royal Assassin, Nightmare, whatever Lord you of the want. Pit. <laughs> Lord of the Pit for two white. And it's a 3 3 Hill Giant already. So I think that's pretty crazy. Uh, he was one of my favorite uh, art cards as well when I was a kid. I just think the, the way that yellow and him coming through as like this like big brother tough guy he's gonna come in and settle the <laughs> score and <laughs> smash help you out dude, yeah, yeah smash some face that's that's what came to my mind funk was sour um this card was being used with um rod of ruin rod of ruin deals one damage to any target you could also do tim with this because every time this fungusaur takes damage uh it grows it's crazy. So you're just pinging in one time, one yeah. time, doing time, just keeps going big. Uh, that was the that was the way that was being uh, synergized. Raging River, you know what this card does? Nope. This is like a rando, crazy red card. Uh, some people would play it, not everyone play it. It allows you when you attack, you divide your opponent's creatures in two piles, and then you. Um, his opponent wishes between left and right. Okay, so he decides where his creatures go into two piles, and then you choose which way you're swinging, and then he uses each of those creatures uh, to block your attacking creature. So there's basically split, a dividing split. split the, yeah, yeah ridge river that splits the creatures. And the creativity in the gameplay is, is superb from this. So yeah. I'm, I'm very uh, happy to see this card. Uh, it's just one of the most creative cards in, in the game because the enchantment sticks around. Oh wow, blue mox, blue mox. Look at that, mox sapphire. Looks great. Looks. This is as mend as they come, Brian. Uh, I can't even say. I just. I'm sitting here. I'm thinking like, should I get him graded? Should I get him <laughs> in cases? But I'm like, no. I only live once. Play with them. Play with them. Uh, I'm not here to. Uh, store or and I'm not, certainly not taking it with me yep. to the grave. So uh, all I can do is just take as good care of them as I can. That'll still um, be worth something. Yeah, it'll still be worth something. Bad Moon, staple black card. Gives all black creatures in play, plus one, plus one. Uh, but then again, as I said, the black border, everything makes just that image stand out of the Bad Moon. Full effect mm -hmm. for the for the player and, and owner. It's just it's so great to see. Hey, oh, oh, just again, out of nowhere. It's like, <laughs> bad, I moon. Go from bad Moon. You went from Bad Moon and it comes to Black Lotus. Wow, so the Black Lotus is going for several thousands already. Now, this being freaking mint, uh, ooh, who knows? I don't mm, know. Probably man. the most famous card in Magic. Famous again? If people have. Yeah, how many times we've heard the story about somebody who knows they have a Black I know a guy who has a Black Lotus. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Sure, you do. Well, I used to have a it. bunch of them. Yeah, <laughs> I used to have a bunch of them, and I'm sure you you guys get all the stories up front, right? Yep. On the retail side, you everybody see knows the, a person who knows a person knows who's had person. a black lotus. Yep. and, and uh, you know someone who's known someone who heard something of <laughs> yeah. someone that had seen one one once upon a time. Well, this is definitely the most famous card in Magic, I'd say. Black Lotus is the the top of the line card to have. It's a staple if you have put in any deck you want. It's insane. Yeah, it drops three mana of any single color. So, and whoa, yeah, why not? Right behind <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Ancestral Recall. Yeah, sure, another Power Nine card. Um, That's five out of this. 
pack alone. Is it five? You counted five? Three moxes. Three moxes. The Black Lotus. Black Lotus and, yeah. and the Ancestral. This is random because here's one of them yep. sitting here on top, and you'd be like, oh, the, all of them might be in there, right? But they, they're not. Uh, this is really f this insanely powered card for one blue. Draw three cards or force your opponent to draw three cards. Either way, someone's drawing three cards for one blue. Yep. At instant speed, I'll take it. So that is a very good card. Righteousness, also a good card um, for black. Um, not black, for white. Uh, as creatures who block at plus seven, plus seven for one white yep. at instant speed, so you can pump up a guy, get yeah. really big, put him in a wall deck. Uh, walls were a thing. They print a lot of walls in uh, old school. All right, we got a really nice savanna. Again, here you see the green neon green. Um, I want to call them like line rings or whatever that are inside mm -hmm. the text box, which amplify the visual enjoyment of the card. Life Lations, color under green, kind of boring. Uh, but there are ways to abuse this with some other cards um, that need green cards to play. Ooh, Chaos uh -oh, Orb. here's Chaos Orb. Now, I believe you guys have a Chaos Orb here, the big one, the oversized one? Yeah, we do. Oh, There's somewhere wow. around here. Somewhere around here. It's seen better days, but it's yeah, still here. Yeah, that's okay. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty cool that a store has been able to get their hands on an oversized uh, Chaos Orb. Uh, now, Chaos Orb is allowed in old school. Uh, they've actually centered old school around Chaos Orb uh, because, man, we didn't get to play Chaos Orb back when I was a kid because it got banned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it got banned, and uh, it was like there were stories, Chaos Confetti, where people would tear their Chaos Orbs up, let them sprinkle down from the height of at least a foot because uh, they go 360 uh, definitely at that point, and um, whatever they hit would be destroyed. Has to make so. one full revolution. <laughs> yeah. So now, now this card is made to uh, be like uh, there's some errata on it. You have to tap it. Um, you flip it. I think it gets destroyed. Um, it's either uh, once the effect resolves at the end of its sequence. But uh, you can see more about the the exact rules on uh, Eternal Central. Uh, the link is on uh, the end games is. Um, tournament uh there'll be a link in the U in the youtube video too be so a link I'll, in the I'll youtube very yeah. good because you guys need to know uh, what the rules are exact for our old school uh tournaments and the format as a general but when we're just talking about the chaos orb um they allow when i say they the community of old school allows a proxy uh for the most part of chaos orb because they want everyone to yep. enjoy chaos orb and that's what it's about flipping card uh and destroying stuff that you weren't able to do mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's also yeah. how you determine tiebreakers. There's no ties in old school. Yeah, if you get to yeah. a tiebreaker, you have a yeah, orb right. flip off. <laughs> yeah, so they have an orb flip off, like a shoot off in uh, in hockey or yeah. soccer. Uh, First one to not flip a chaos orb loses. The, you know, to to miss the target. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually had to do that in our last <laughs> old school tournament. Uh, I was up against Jason Rowe. Uh, Jason, if you hear this out there, that was fun. Um, but we did have a flip off, and I think uh, I think it was either my second or third try I missed. And that gets me the loss. So <laughs> that was fun. That was like a shoot off yeah. uh, like in, into the finals. So uh, that was fun. So that's the Chaos Orb. Um, I think these were going for about 350 at this point, just for this this version. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm thankful for the community to accept and embrace Collector's Edition being played because we need as many of the original uh, Arts out there. Yeah, arts out there and, and use them and have some fun. Slide of mind, this is a card I was talking about earlier. I mentioned uh, it's like the magical hack card, but except it changes the color word. Mm -hmm. So if something says like the circle protection, protection red, you can change it to protection green. I'm sorry. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. it's like, no, you, you play green, I'm just main boarding circles. No, I want to make sure they work against you. So I'm playing these. So I'll change the color word. Oh, here's a nice tundra. Uh, black bordered, original art. Uh, I don't know what they're going for. They're going for a nice, nice amount. Animated wall. This is this is one of the like enjoyable but yet random like creativities in this set because if you see the art, let's see if I can pull it up here. The wall has a face and arm on it. Uh, yeah, right there. You see that? Yep, yeah, right there. It's just. Funny to see how it has a little, <laughs> a little face and arm yeah, stubby it. arms coming out. Um, but it allows for one white, any wall to now be able to attack. 
which is just so cool. If you want to build a wall deck, and then you're like, uh, guess what? Yeah, yeah, guess what? Here it comes. It's coming at you. Um, so I have a wall deck with these guys in them just for fun. Urza's glasses? Yeah, sunglasses of Urza. So white mana can be used as either red or white. When I remember when I saw this card when I was back in the day, when I was in my young uh, times, that this card, just the image of it, was was so unique it's like a pair of random sunglasses and they look like ruby lenses i'm like dan frazier did this i'm like i just want to play it because it's cool so i i i remember i built a red and white deck just so i could put this in uh and all your white mana can be used for any color so it comes in handy elvis archers uh really strong green card uh takes out with giant growth, pretty much any creature in Magic. It's got two one first strike. Yep. <laughs> Takes out a Juzamjin, Shivan if if it's on the attack, uh, and it's got the first strike, so no harm's gonna come to it. And reach, that's yeah. nice, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't do reach though. No, it, you know, it's just got first strike, uh, but it's still really good. And, and what's crazy about this card? This is a rare card. They made this a rare, so. It's worth a punch. Oh, just again, out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> talk about random little creatures. I was throwing a, a, a Mox Emerald. What's that? Five, four? Six. Sixth? Out of this one, yes. Sixth out of this one. That's pretty crazy. Mox Emerald. Very good Mox, just like the rest of them. But with green being able to accelerate the way they do, putting this in is just like the cherry on the moon. It's over shake. top, yeah, yeah. It's over the top of the line. I mean, it's just as good as it gets. Mana barbs. Mana barbs. Whenever any land is tapped, it does damage to the controller. So this is kind of good if you're not tapping as many lands. Maybe you're like artifacts. I mean, you're playing burn, and you throw that down afterwards, and you're ahead of life already. So they gotta they have to play catch up anyway. Yeah. So yeah, you can. I'll pay play. one damage to lightning bolt you for three. Yep. You're trying to play a Mahamodi over there. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pay six, take six. Yeah. Hey, we're getting there. Yeah. Helping the cause. Jade statue. Yeah. No, so this one's a monolith. Jade it's kind of like the statue, but it's a monolith. Yeah. So this one, uh, you may take damage done to any creature uh, unto yourself. So it redirects and saves your creatures. And it's kind of like uh, maybe if you have the circles, that's good. But most play most times, you don't want to take damage to save your creatures. I don't know. Unless it's your one creature that you need. Yeah, I guess maybe like a factory or something. Um, nightmare. So we got Nightmare coming out of nowhere again, like the <laughs> I've seen a lot of the <laughs> cards. And um, again, with the art, with it being black bordered, with it having that bright yellow uh, coloring in the middle, I mean, this is visually fabulous and it's over i mean it's just it blows me away looking at this it's art. a pretty sweet card yeah it's, and it's a great card yeah. at the same time flying big boy <laughs> flying big boy keeps growing like, you get can, more swamps you can ramp them out early with a dark writ and then it's, it might only be like a three three or something like that but oh, it keeps growing yeah. it doesn't matter yeah you're absolutely right uh and there's the winner we were talking about look at that blue color that blue is so nice yeah that blue is <laughs> amazing and this is what I just I'm so happy to see this. The card is amazing. I think it's like a $600 card in, in beta. So, you know, to you guys out there, you don't want to buy the beta one. Get the collector's edition or get the fourth edition one. It's even cheaper. I think they've, no, you can't even play that for old school. And I was going to say they reprinted it in Internal Masters, but you can't use that for yeah, old school. Yeah, so that's the thing about old school. They want you to keep the original art, and you know what? I'm 100% on board it with that. It does keep the, it makes it a lot more authentic yeah. feeling. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is, the old school is really about reliving the moments of times gone by. All right, so we're going into... Hold on. 